In this video, we will be creating this shader for this book. And the shader will use the world position to pick a random color. So that could be a good way to create a lot of color variations. So this is the scene we'll be working in. We have our books and this is just a mesh instance node. And we have a shader material on it with a shader. And as you can see, right now, we're displaying the vertex color of their object. The cover of the book has this red vertex color, and the side of the book has this blue vertex color. So we will make a shader that we change. We will only change the cover of the book and have the side be the same color. So let's create our shader. We will start by creating a gradient texture. And this gradient texture will set which color the book will be. So let's create a uniform. It's going to be a uniform sampler 2D. Let's call it gradient texture. And we're going to use it as a color. So we need to do source color. So let's open it up in our shader parameters under gradient texture. We're going to give it a new gradient texture 1D. So I'm going to click on that. I'm going to change the interpolation mode to constant. And that just means that we have these harsh transitions. If we have it a linear, you're going to see it will be a smooth transition between the colors. So let's create some colors for this. Let's have a red color. Let's have a green color. And let's have a blue color. And let's have a yellow color. So the idea is that the book can be one of these colors that we have chosen. And we also need a custom UV. And we want to do our calculations in the vertex shader. So, and we're going to pass it to the fragment shader. So we need to make it a varying. So here I'm just going to type varying. And it's going to be a vec2. And let's call it custom UV. Let's just set a value to it. So custom UV equals vec2. Zero in the X component and zero in the Y component. The Y component will be zero all the time. And then we will change the X component. And when this custom UV in the X component is zero, it's going to use this yellow color. And then we have, we have it at one, it's going to be in the red. So in the fragment shader, let's create some colors. So we're going to use two colors, one for the cover and one for the side of the book. We can start with the side color. Let's create, it's going to be a wick three. And let's call it side color. And let's give it a value of one. So it's a white color. So vec3, let's call it cover color. And now we're going to use our gradient texture and our custom UV. So we're going to type texture and then our gradient texture. And we're going to use our custom UV. And we need to have it dot RGB. And now we want to blend these two together. And to do that, we're going to use the vertex color. So let's create vec3, let's call it out color. And we're going to use the mix function. So we're going to first type side color and then the cover color. And we're going to use the vertex color of the object. So we're going to use the red vertex color. So we're going to type color dot r. And now in the albedo, we can replace our vertex color with our out color. And now we have this yellow book. And as you can see, we have white on the side and yellow for the cover. Since our custom UV has zero, zero, and the first value here is zero, it's going to be this yellow. So if we change this value, let's say 0 0.5, it's going to be a green color. It's the same as we changing this. So if we change it to 0 0.9, it's going to be red. And the idea is we want to set a value here that's going to be between 0 to 1, but it's going to be based on its world position. So it's going to change based on the book, where the book is. So we need to get the position of the book. So we're going to be in the vertex shader. Let's create a new variable. It's going to be a vector 3. Let's call it world position. And to get the world position, we could, uh, we could use the model matrix, but we can also use, use this node position world and this is the same as using the model matrix but when, if you would do the model matrix only the translation part so this will give us 
the object's position in the world. So let's also create float. We're going to use this in our custom UV in the X component. So let's call it position seed. And I want to use the frac function. I only want it to be in the zero to one range. And let's do the world position dot X. And let's take this position seed in our custom UV in the first slot. So I'm going to do position seed. And now the book should change color based on its X position. But if we move it in any other axis, it will stay the same. Here in a position seed, we're going to add world position dot Y and C. So world position dot Y. And now it would change based on the Y position. Let's also add world position dot C. And now it will change on all axes. The one thing to keep in mind is right now, if we move it one unit at a time in a any axis, it will be the same color. And to fix that, we could use offset each axis in this world position. And then we can use do a multiply with a vector three. So vec three. And here we can do put some, uh, we want a different value for each axis. So I'm just going to put 1.05. 1.14 and 1.33. Now, if we move it one unit, it will be a different color. And we can also control how fast it will change its color if we do a multiply. So let's multiply with a large number, so maybe like 8.5. As we move it now, you can see it's changing color very rapidly. And if we would take a lower number here, let's say 0 0.1, we can move it much further before it starts changing color. So this is how you can create some color variations with using the world position of the book. Here I also have this multi mesh node. So this is multiple books in one draw call. As you can see, they still have different colors even though this is just one node and we're using the node position world and that's because this node position world when we are working in the vertex shader we're actually getting the mesh position so that will be the same as using the model matrix so if we do model matrix and let's only do the translation part that will be the same Let's do it back, node, world position. But if you were to use this node position world in the fragment shader, you would actually get the nodes position and not the mesh position. So they do produce slightly different results based on if you do the calculations in the vertex shader compared to the fragment shader. 